Well, hello, everyone. A good afternoon or a good evening, depending on where you're joining us from today. Welcome to Engineering for Change, or E4C for short. Today, we're very pleased to bring you a special segment in E4C's 2016 webinar series focusing on mobile data collection. My name is Jana Aranda, and I'm the Director of Engineering for Change programs located here in the SME headquarters, and I'll be the moderator of today's webinar. I'd like to take a moment now to tell you a bit about the mobile data collection series. The widespread availability of mobile communications offers international development researchers, practitioners, and students new tools and techniques for collecting field data and determining success of projects. So we've partnered with the Development Impact Lab at UC Berkeley, or DIL, to introduce a sample of survey software tools and demonstrate how to implement each tool in practice. This webinar is the first in a series of six webinars that Dylan e 4 c will be hosting through April. Today, we're starting with EngageSpark and are joined by the co-founder and CEO, Abner Mizrahi. Welcome. If you would like to make a recommendation for a specific platform, share your feedback, uh, suggest future topics and speakers, we invite you to contact the series team via the email addresses visible on the slide, webinars at engineeringforchange.org, and Dill at berkeley.edu. Now, before we move on to EngageSpark, I'd like to tell you a bit about Engineering for Change and who we are. E4C is a knowledge exchange platform and global community of nearly, or oh, actually now over 1 million engineers, designers, development practitioners, and social scientists leveraging technology to solve quality of life challenges faced by underserved communities. These can include access to clean water and sanitation, sustainable energy, improved agriculture, and more. We invite you to join E4C by becoming a member. Membership provides cost-free access to relevant and current news, professional development resources, including jobs and fellowships, and a growing database of hundreds of field-tested products in our solutions library. Members enjoy a unique user experience based on their site behavior and engagement. Essentially, the more you interact with our site, the better we will be able to serve you resources that meet your needs and interests. We invite you to join our passionate global community and contribute to making people's lives better across the world. Please check out our website to learn more and sign up. Now, we mentioned that we are working with DIL, and we wanted to share with you a little bit about DIL. It's an international consortium of universities, research institutes, NGOs, and industry partners addressing global poverty through advances in science and engineering. DIL is headquartered at the University of California, Berkeley, and was launched in 2012 with support of USAID and the US Global Development Lab. This leverages the innovative capacity of world-class universities to design development solutions, which couple new technologies with novel economic and behavioral interventions. DIL calls this approach development engineering. Now, this webinar you are participating in today is part of our professional development offering. It is a free publicly available series of online seminars showcasing the best practices and thinking of development practitioners. Information on upcoming installments in the series, as well as archived videos of past presentations, can be found on our webinars page. Also, if you're following us on Twitter, I'd like to invite you to join the conversation with our dedicated hashtag, hashtag E4C webinar. Now, a few housekeeping items before we get rolling. Let's see where everyone is joining us from today. This will be a great opportunity for you all to get familiar with our interface. So in the chat window, please enter your location. So let me see. I'll start. I see folks from Jersey. I'm in Oakland, USA. I'm here in New York, New York, in Newark, Berkeley. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. Welcome, we're pleased to have you. Some of you are entering this information in the Q&A window, so it's a great time to draw your attention to that. Um, please keep in mind that the Q&A window should be reserved for questions for the presenter. If you have any specific comments, please enter them into the chat window to make sure that we are keeping track of questions versus comments. So um, if you don't see these items, 
please just uh, click on the very top right-hand corner where the icons for both are located. If you're listening to this audio broadcast and you encounter any trouble, try hitting stop and then start. Uh, you may also want to try opening up WebEx in a different browser. So lots of folks have joined us in Vienna, California, um, Chennai, India, Germany, um, Rochester, New York, Madrid, Spain. Thank you, everyone, for joining us from regions worldwide. Um, following the webinar, to, uh, to request a certificate of completion showing one professional development hour, or PH, for this session, please follow the instructions on top of our professional development page. The link is listed on the slide right here. So with all of our housekeeping out of the way, it's my great pleasure to introduce today's presenter. Avner Mizrahi, who is the founder and CEO of Engage Spark. After three years of practicing corporate litigation in DC, Avner moved to Uganda to focus his career on human rights. There, he first volunteer for, volunteered for Platform for Labor Action, a local labor rights NGO, and then co founded and built the anti corruption reporting platform, Not in My Country. Avner then co founded Engage Spark with Ravi Agarwal in 2012 to help NGOs maximize their impact. He will share details on Engage Spark with us today, and I'm very excited to turn it over to him. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Hope everybody can hear me. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm Avner, uh, and as Jana mentioned, uh, I'm a lawyer by background. Uh, let me just tell you about my co-founder, Ravi. He is a tech entrepreneur. We met in Uganda while he was volunteering at Grameen Foundation, and I was doing some anti-corruption work. And uh, we were having lunch one day, and he told me about this idea he had for Engage Spark um, for building a really easy-to-use, self-service, uh, web-hosted uh, tools uh, for uh, nonprofits and businesses uh, and government agencies to use to engage those people who didn't have access to the internet but do have mobile phones in developing countries. Uh, and I said, oh, that sounds interesting. I'd love to get involved. I could see NGOs uh, using something like that to build their own anti-corruption reporting tools, which is something I'm very passionate about. And I said, I'd love to get involved. And little did I know I'd be starting a company and uh, building something. So we've been um, working on this since the end of 2012. Um, we um, have a really strong team. We're based out of Cebu, and we're a not-for-profit social enterprise, which means um, that our goal is to help NGOs maximize their impact, and we're mission-aligned with NGOs. Um, we're not here to get rich off of this. We're really here to uh, help alleviate poverty. Uh, so these are some of our customers and partners. Um, just as an FYI, I'm going to be going through this presentation uh, rather quickly so I can spend most of the time uh, demoing and the actual platform for you all so you can see how it works. Um, so um, the, one of the key things here is that we are leveraging uh, the power of dumb phones. Um, a lot of people um, sort of think, especially in the West, that the Internet has spread like rapid fire across the world. And it has to some extent. Um, but the UN actually uh, just came out with a report uh, in uh, late 2015 that still 65% of people living in developing countries are offline. Um, and in the least developed countries, it's even more than 90%. So the Internet is not ubiquitous. Uh, but mobile phones are old school, um, what we call dumb phones, meaning not smartphones, uh, just phones that can be used for text messages, for SMS, and for phone calls. Uh, and most people in the world do have access to a mobile phone. Um, and so that's what our platform leverages. It allows you to engage them in a medium, uh, in a way that, that you can via, via mobile phones. So uh, what we do is we make it really easy for non-technical people to do that, to build different kinds of interactive uh, SMS and voice campaigns. And uh, I'll walk you through the platform soon so you can get a feel for it, uh, but this is uh, just sort of an overview of the different kinds of features and, and things that we have. Um, 
Uh, one of the things we can also do is airtime transfer, uh, where you can you know, send airtime to anybody's phone as an incentive or reward um, or compensating them for, uh, for participating in a survey, for example, or um, just in a, in a campaign. So I'll continue along. Uh, so just, just to give you a quick idea of some of the programs we've worked with, uh, or worked on. So we've worked, we worked on a big project in the Philippines with Mercy Corps um, around Typhoon Haiyan, the big typhoon that, that devastated parts of the Philippines a few years ago. And they worked with 20,000 survivors um, of the typhoon and, and did something very innovative in a financial literacy program where they were trying to encourage people to become more resilient for the next um, typhoon. And uh, they wanted to basically encourage people about to save more and budget better and so on and so forth. And so they created a soap opera series about this married couple, uh, Ben and Joy, and the recipients would receive a phone call from our platform twice a week, and they would hear this married couple having a discussion in their local language, of course, um, and the married couple would be somebody that the beneficiaries could relate to. And uh, at the end of the call... Uh, you know, these were short, maybe one-minute episodes. They were fun and engaging, and they each had a lesson. And at the end of the episode, there would be a quiz. Press one if you think Ben and Joy should do this with the money. Press two if you think they should do that with the money. And if they press one, then they would uh, hear, uh, yes, that's correct, and here's why. If they press two, they would hear, no, that's incorrect, and here's why. And stay tuned for next week's episode. And and it it was a huge hit. The the, the beneficiaries loved the stories. In fact, one uh, one of the uh, uh, beneficiaries actually um, with the with uh, this was part of a, a cash transfer program as well. Uh, what they did with the money was bought some pigs for a piggery and named the pigs Ben and Joy. So um, it was it was a real hit with the people, um, and it also had a lot of impact. Uh, so just to give you an idea, a 106% increase in the use of savings products among people who received uh, the voice soap operas. And if you look at this um, chart here, they, it, it, the storyline went so well that they ended up doing another one around the couple Anna and Juan. And these are real savings rates where it went up during the Ben and Joy storyline, sort of maintained itself almost, and then spiked up again during the Anna and Juan storyline of people actually putting cash into their bank accounts. Um, so just an idea of the impact from a program like this uh, using voice, which can be very engaging um, and entertaining for people. Uh, another quick showcase is in Jordan. Uh, we're working with the International Rescue Committee on a program for refugees, of course, and uh, they're helping uh, women who are Syrian refugees in Jordan uh, who are living in refugee camps and are abused and want to get help 24 by 7. And so uh, through our platform, uh, they've set up a hotline where women can make a missed call to a local phone number. And missed calls are something that's very powerful um, in developing countries and, and used frequently. Uh, a missed call means somebody calls a local number, maybe lets it ring once, uh, hangs up, and that's a signal. And so in our case, we use it to trigger uh, a, a, a message back or a call back to the person. So uh, in, in a lot of countries, they call this flashing or beeping. And so with our system, you can literally in, in seconds add in missed call into a campaign that you build so that you can allow people to uh, miss call a phone number, and then that triggers our system to call them back. And it's really powerful because it's free for the beneficiary to do that miss call uh, to um, to trigger information. So if they want to retrieve something, they can do it for free because it doesn't cost anything to let a phone ring once and then hang up. And so in Jordan, women are doing a miss call to uh, a local phone number, and that triggers a, a call when, when they're having an emergency situation. That triggers a call back to them where uh, they hear an IVR uh, that says, "Press one if you're having an emergency in Camp A. Press two if you're having an emergency in Camp B." So on and so forth. And if they press one on the call, that automatically triggers a text message to go to the field officer who's in charge of Camp A at that point in time and says. 
a woman with the phone number with this phone number, and then it includes her phone number in the SMS. Just report an emergency. Uh, contact her immediately. So women can get help when they need to. And building something like that on our platform uh, literally takes five minutes. Uh, so I'll then uh, go ahead and uh, switch my screen over for the demo. Um, and I guess at the end, I will answer questions about all this. Let me um, share my screen now. And okay. I hope everybody can see my screen. Okay, so this is uh, what the Engage Spark platform uh, looks like. Uh, the idea is you have SMS and voice. And what you see down here are what we call engagement types. And these are uh, essentially three-step wizards for, to help you create what you want to do in minutes. So I'm going to start out by showing you the curriculum engagement type. These are essentially templates um, to make it easy for you to build your campaign. So a curriculum is an SMS campaign where you create a series of messages that go out over a schedule that you set in advance. So this could be for an educational purpose. Let's say you want to send people messages on uh, best practices in, um, in farming or something. You can just very easily say, here is message one in your farming educational curriculum. Obviously, you would say whatever you want. And you can personalize these really easily. So you can say, hi, first name. And so what that means is Jane will get, hi, Jane, here is message one in your farming educational curriculum. And you know, John will get, hi, John, here is message one. You can put in any personal data about a contact um, that you've added into the system. And I'll show you how to add contacts into the system in a little bit. So then you would add another message. And so now we have message two. And you would just say, here is message two. And you can, can schedule this. So you could say, oh, this should go out you know, five days after the previous message. You can then schedule uh, the next message. Uh, er, and this is, here is message three. And of course, all of these uh, can be personalized very easily. Uh, and you can say this you want to go out you know, two weeks later, and so on and so forth. And so very simply, you can build out an entire, um, an entire curriculum or educational um, system over uh, as many messages as you want. And it's all pre-scheduled. You sort of um, set it and forget it. Uh, and it just, all the messages will just go out as, um, as you scheduled here. You then uh, would just hit continue. And um, as an FYI, all of our engagement types are three steps. So they all have content as the first step and contacts, uh, and then the last step where you confirm. So on this page, you would select your contacts. Um, this isn't really where you're managing your contacts. You'll be managing your contacts up here in the contacts page, which I'll show you in a little bit. But while you're creating the engagement, you could just create a one-off contact if you wanted to. You might want to do that while you're just initially testing, sort of going through the engagement types quickly. Uh, but you could just very easily select individual contacts, uh, or you could select groups that you've already created. And we'll talk about those in a little bit. You can also, um, so these are selecting existing contacts that are already in the system. You can also just click on this tab and, and sort of turn on subscription, as we call it, where somebody can, for example, do a missed call to join this campaign. So the way that would work is you simply uh, check this box and you add a phone number to your account. Now, this is something very, very powerful that we have where you can just click on this button and add a phone number in more than 90 countries in the world. Um, to link to your engagements. And by a, a local phone number, I mean a number that can either receive voice calls, so in this case, missed calls, or receive text messages. And that's really important for two-way interactive campaigns uh, where you want people to text into a number or you want people to call into a number or do a missed call into a number. And so you can just search for your country. Here I'm searching for Kenya. You can switch it into Indonesia, for example, just with search. Um, and these, these are real numbers that will be instantly in your account. So I'll, 
I'll just show you guys. I'll actually go ahead and buy a U.S. number, for example. Um, just as, uh, yep. And so I can just hit buy, and uh, it takes a second, and that number has now been purchased, and it's now in my account, and you'll see it here in the dropdown. Um, so if you were to make a missed call to this number, uh, you'd automatically be enrolled in, in this campaign. And by what, what happens when uh, you select, when somebody calls that number is our system uh, will let it ring a couple times and then it will immediately disconnect the call. So there, there won't be any cost to the caller because our system is not actually answering the call. So it's free for them to engage and register for a campaign like this. Um, so as you see, it's really easy. You can buy numbers in more than 90 countries in the world um, instantly, and they're automatically in your account. Uh, so I'll just hit continue now. So let's say we selected a contact. We turn on this call registration. Then you go to step three, uh, and you could specify a caller ID, for example. So I could say I want this to come from EngageSpark or whatever my organization name is. Uh, it depends on country and telco, whether uh, that um, will actually end up appearing on the recipient's phone as who the SMS is coming from. Um, but in most countries in the world, we can register a caller ID for you so that, um, so, so that your organization name would show up on the recipient's phone so they see uh, who, who the message is coming from. So that's the curriculum. It's, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, you're literally just adding in uh, your text messages. One last thing I'll show you, and this is true for all SMS campaigns, is we support uh, any character sets, um, and our system also automatically recognizes uh, right-to-left languages. So if you just start typing, for example, on Arabic here, you'll see our system automatically just started displaying it right-to-left because it knows that Arabic is a right-to-left language. Um, so that's really useful for practitioners working in countries that have right-to-left languages, because imagine you know, having to view that in a left-to-right way. So our system just handles it automatically for you. Uh, so that is the curriculum. Uh, I'll show you a few more uh, engagement types on the SMS side, and then we'll jump into voice real quick. The blast is the most basic one. That's just a one-off message, uh, the SMS that goes out. Um, to a bunch of recipients. Uh, we then have the SMS polls. So this is where you can do a survey, for example. So you can ask questions. Uh, what is your gender? Um, of course, you can always personalize. Um, and then you can um, specify valid answers. So you can add in validation because especially with SMS, a lot of the data that comes in tends to be messy. Um, People don't always respond exactly how you want them to. Uh, and so having validation can help. So you can basically say, okay, the, and you can uh, separate valid replies um, separated by commas. So you can simply say, these are the only valid replies. So if somebody responds with anything else, you can um, down here, you know, add in an error message essentially that says that's not valid. You know, please reply M or F. Uh, and then if so if they reply hello, they'll automatically get this. If they reply hello again, they'll get it again, and you can set how many times you want that to happen until you get a valid reply from them. Now, this is uh, valuable because you're pushing people to, find out, to give you clean data, and when you get the clean data, you can then filter those results um, by that clean data. So what I mean by that is uh, all of our reporting or analytics is in real time. So as soon as somebody sends in a text message, for example, um, you'll see on the report dashboard, which I'll show you in a little bit, uh, what they sent in. And, um, and you can uh, download a detailed report with uh, every single person, what they sent in, when they sent it, when our system sent them a message, and so on and so forth. Uh, and so there'll just be a column called valid or not. Um, and you can just filter by yes, so you only get the valid replies. And of course, you can look at the the bad data, as we might call it. Um, but uh, you can also very quickly filter by the clean data so you can just see the results uh, uh, that are valid more easily. Um, so you can, of course, add other questions. When they reply to the first question, they get the second question. 
quite simple. Um, so from a validation standpoint, you can also validate by number. So you could say uh, that it has to be a number between 10 and 100 uh, or whatever. That's not valid, same sort of idea. So it's quite simple. You can add as many questions as you want and you're then interacting with them. Uh, you could just hit continue at this point, you know, select your contacts or, or a group, you know, hit continue again. And then on step three, you'll uh, actually need to select a phone number. So this is something that trips people up sometimes because uh, they don't, uh, people sometimes don't think about the fact that with an SMS poll, you actually need people to send a text message into a phone number, right? They're replying to your questions. So they need to receive the message from a phone number so that they can easily just hit reply on their cell phone and the response goes back to that number, which is connected to our system. So just as we looked at it uh, before, uh, you'll want to uh, buy a phone number uh, to, uh, uh, to receive uh, the, to send from and receive SMS replies from. You can easily just change this um, add a new number here and so on and so forth. Uh, in countries where we don't have these uh, local phone numbers available for purchase directly on the platform, um, uh, we have an Android app that you can install uh, just from the Play Store and there's some instructions on setting it up here. And the way that works is you, um, uh, you, you install our app onto an Android phone which we locally in the country and have a local SIM card in it. And when you launch the engagement, our uh, system talks to that Android app essentially and says, hey, go send all of these uh, text messages to these phone numbers. And then the phone numbers get sent, uh, the SMSs get sent by the, by the phone itself over that SIM card. And then from a recipient standpoint, they don't know it came from an Android phone. To them, it's just a normal SMS that they received. And they uh, will... Uh, just be able to reply to it. The reply will go into the Android phone. Our app will capture it uh, and pass it back to the server, which will then process it and uh, send the next question or whatever it is. Uh, and one, one thing actually, just to uh, jump back to step three for a second on is, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is our pricing. So all of our pricing is paid per use. We try to uh, make the system very easy in three ways. The first is the UI. Hopefully it does look easy to all of you. Um, we think it is. Uh, secondly is pricing. We don't have like setup fees or monthly subscription fees to use the platform at all. Um, it's all pay per use, which means per SMS or per voice minute. And all of our pricing is at engagespark.com slash pricing. Uh, you can just search by country and it's all by telco. So one telco in a specific country might have a different cost per SMS or per voice minute uh, than sending an SMS to another telco. And by telco, I mean what SIM card the recipient cell phone, um, uh, what telco that SIM card is, is, is from. Uh, so if it's an AT&T SIM card, then that's, uh, you know, for example, then that uh, you know the, the pricing you see for sending an SMS to an AT&T phone is, is, is the pricing for sending to that person. Uh, so of course, also you can schedule an engagement here in the start time category, so or start time dropdown. So you can hit launch and it'll just go out. Um, so the messages go out immediately, or you can just say on a specific date, for example, and select a date and time and so on and so forth. Uh, the last area where we are tried to make things very easy um, is also on the telco connectivity side. So we've handled all the telco connections behind the scenes. So you can send out an SMS message or a voice call to any phone uh, basically in the world, or any mobile phone in the world. Um, and we've already made those telco connections. So you don't have to deal with the telcos. You literally just hit launch and the messages or the voice calls will be sent. Um, without having to integrate telcos at all. So I'll show you uh, very quickly one last uh, SMS engagement type, and then we'll jump into uh, the voice side. So the auto reply is an engagement where you have keywords and replies, and you can use this to allow people to, um, to retrieve data when they want to. It can be like an information retrieval service. So let's say a keyword is like malaria, and a response can be always sleep under a bed net to avoid malaria. Um, another keyword can be uh, 
you know, savings. Um, always save one dollar a day or whatever. Uh, of course, you can personalize these. Um, you can also do some cool stuff. So let's say you have like a um, a a personalized a column in your contacts called like um, I don't know balance, and you're a microfinance organization. You can tell people to text in balance to get their balance at any time. So they text in balance and they get hi. Uh, first name, hi, first name, your balance is, and then imagine, sorry, I don't have one here, but these are the columns in my account, and I'll show you that in a second, but imagine city or balance, you would then, you know, Jane would get, hi, Jane, your balance is $500, I would get, hi, Abner, your balance is $200 or whatever. Um, so you can add as many keywords as you want, you can upload a spreadsheet with keywords and replies, you can separate multiple keywords by commas. So if they text in either of these words, they'll automatically get this reply. And of course, you have an error message down here if they send in an invalid keyword. Um, so you can just make this available, advertise, hey, text, um, you know, anything you want to, uh, or you know, let's say it's um, election season and you want people to find out where to vote, text the name of your town to this phone number to find out where to vote. So uh, the keyword would be the town, let's say New York, um, that's a big town, but, uh, and the reply would be voting is in all schools between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. or whatever. Uh, so really powerful. You can allow people to retrieve uh, data uh, when they want to. So before I jump into the voice side, I'm going to quickly go to, I'm going to quickly go to, um, this is the engagement list, by the way, where you'll see your list of engagements that you've launched or saved and, and so on and so forth and are working through. So I'm going to quickly jump onto the contacts page just to show you all um, some things. So this is where you'll manage your contacts. You, of course, can upload contacts. Um, we have some templates so you see the format to, uh, to, to put them in in Excel. Um, you can create additional columns, so attributes. So all of the columns over here to the right of this column are columns that I manually added by either pressing add column or you could just add them in a spreadsheet that you upload. Just add the additional columns and the data and then just upload that spreadsheet and our system will automatically create those extra columns uh, and they will be displayed here. Now, the, one of the huge benefits of these extra columns other than things like personalization is smart groups. So you can create a group based on rules. You could say something like, um, you know, uh, uh, female uh, Cebu. So you could say, I want all contacts where their gender is equal to female and their city is equal to Cebu. And so our system will then automatically create that group and you see it automatically populates because there are with 112 contacts because there are 112 contacts who meet those rules. If I were to then, you know, change a contact from, um, let's find one real quick, uh, from Cebu here to Manila, uh, they will automatically be removed from that group because they no longer meet the rules. Uh, of that group, and you'll see it's now dropped to 111. So you can, you know, update contacts very quickly, and the groups automatically get updated for um, uh, for sending engagements to those groups. So let's jump into, uh, I'd say, our most powerful engagement type, the IVR poll. So here you can do voice surveys, for example. You can ask a question. Uh, you would upload that question file here, for example. Um, and uh, it, could, it could say something like um, press one if you're female, two if you're male. And then down here, you specify the valid key presses. So one and two are valid. You can add additional ones by clicking on add key press down here. So maybe three is I don't want to say. Um, and then down here, of course, you can have an error file if they press six or they don't press anything. Uh, whatever you upload here will play. You can also use this to disseminate information. So you can tell people, uh, you can upload a file here that says press one to learn about hand washing. Uh, and then if they press one, whatever file you upload here will play. So press one to learn about hand washing, press two to learn about malaria, and so on and so forth. And so you can just upload those files here and the, um, the recipients 
we'll, when they press two uh, on the call, we'll hear, we'll hear this, and so on and so forth. Uh, you also can do spoken response questions. So these are where people respond by pressing a key. You can also ask them a question, what did you learn last week from the program? State your answer um, after the beep. And so they, um, uh, our system will then record their actual spoken response on the call and make it available to you. Uh, so another really nice thing in here is languages. So let's say you're working in a country that has many different dialects or many different languages. Uh, you can just click on this and specify a different language per file. So you could say, this is the English version of that file. And then I'm going to upload, let's say, a French version um, as well. And so what that means is anybody who you have specified, let's say, on the contacts page in the language column here that uh, their language is English, when they receive this call, they will uh, hear the English version. But those who you specified speak French will hear the French version when they answer. And then when they press one, of course, you'll have different languages for one and different languages for two and so on and so forth. And they'll throughout the call hear uh, their language. One last quick thing uh, uh, is uh, we have some settings down here and call retry settings is the most uh, powerful one uh, is a really important setting. Uh, it allows you to automate retries for people who don't answer the calls. So, uh, for example, you know, many people will not answer the call on the first try. They're at a phone network, their battery's dead, they're busy, whatever it is. So it's really important to increase your answer rate to um, add in automated retries. So you could say, you know, Try them two more times that day, waiting four hours between each try. Do it every day for the next four days. Um, but don't call them on Fridays. And so you can set this whatever schedule you want, and then our system will just keep retrying them according to that schedule to get the call out to them. Um, but of course, we'll only retry people who actually, uh, who, who don't answer the call. People who do answer won't get the retries. Uh, you can also add additional questions, I forgot to mention. Uh, on a single call very easily. Um, and so when they finish the first question, they continue the second question and so on and so forth. Um, if the call drops in the middle of the survey, um, you can have the system call them back immediately and skip the questions they already answered uh, so that they, you know, if, if the call drops for some reason, they're in the middle of question two, our system will call them back immediately and you can play a new start message, for example, that says, sorry, the call drops. Um, Please, uh, uh, we'll start where you left off in the, in the poll. Uh, and so it'll automatically start there. So this is the voice IVR poll, but this is the simple voice IVR poll. Um, it may, there's a lot of power in it, but it's actually the simple version. Up here, I'm going to show you the advanced version. Uh, advanced version is where you can do some really cool, powerful stuff. So for example, um, Instead of just playing a file, uh, an audio file, after somebody presses a key on the call, you can have an action. So you can have audio, play audio as an action, but you can add additional action. So you could say, hey, I want to update the contact. So let's say your question up here is press one if you're female, two if you're male. So if they press one, you can say update contact gender to email. Uh, so now our system will automatically update the contacts profile right in the gender column here, the female, if they press one uh, to that question on, on this voice IVR poll that they receive. So this way, uh, you allow people to automatically update their data. Right? You can say press one if you live in Manila, press two if you live in Cebu. And of course, you can then update uh, their city that way. But you can also update people's languages that way. So let's say you don't know people's languages. They're doing a missed call into the system uh, to trigger this IVR poll to get a, a call back to them. And so maybe your initial question up here that you upload um, can say, press one for English in English, pour français en français, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so if they press one, you update their language to English. Now that actually updates in the middle of the call live. So if you add other questions, um, you can, for example, 
then have languages for each of the other questions. So in question one, you, you update, for example, people's languages. So you say update the language to French if they press two. Um, and then uh, when they go on to question two, you'll have the different language versions of the files already. And they will then, of course, hear uh, the correct language version for all the um, other questions on the call. So the language updates in real time in that call. Um, so that's a nice, powerful thing. Uh, another, uh, so of course you can update contacts um, uh, uh, um, profiles this way. You can also add in conditional logic into the survey. So um, if they are, let's say you ask, that's one, if you're female, two if you're male, and you want to ask different questions to women than men. So you add another action and you add what we call jump logic or conditional logic. So you just jump to question three, for example, if they're females, they'll skip over question two um, and, uh, and uh, they won't get it. So you can basically allow them to jump all over the survey as, as you please. Um, and you know, let's say another type of action we have in here is hang up. So um, meaning let's say if they are a man, right, if it's true that they're a male, um, this survey isn't appropriate for them. So maybe you uh, have an MP3 file that says, sorry, have a nice day, goodbye, and then the call ends. But anybody else, the call continues for them, and so on and so forth. So we're going to also over time be adding more and more actions, um, like, um, you know, add them uh, to a group if you wanted to use a regular group instead of a smart group or send them airtime uh, and, and so on and so forth. There's, there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff in the actions over time, uh, but already there's a lot of cool stuff in here. Um, so the final few things I'll show you because I think I only have a couple more minutes before we, um, uh, we I open it up to questions. Uh, there are two more engagement types in here. The IVR poll is the most powerful. Blast is pretty simple. Um, just a voice blast, uh, IVR menu is somewhere in between the simple IVR poll and the advanced IVR poll with a different sort of user interface. Um, just want to show you reports real quick. You, you access your reports um, uh, from the engagements dashboard where you uh, click on, uh, there's an icon uh, that, that is a report icon and it'll take you to the report for that engagement. Um, and this is just a sample one. Um, where what you basically see is aggregate data. So you'll see 10 people press one for this question, 36 people press two, you have a little pie chart, um, and you see a breakdown. In here, if people had spoken a response, um, you'll also see, you just don't have a great example of it uh, right now. Sorry, I probably should have prepared that, but um, uh, you'll actually just see a, a, a play icon where you can, you know, if they had a spoken response where our system recorded um, uh, what they spoke, you can listen to it, um, and you can transcribe it. Uh, and then what you can do is you can download a detailed report where you uh, get um, all of the data. So you get to see like what time the person, the call was made to the person, what time they answered the call, how, what time the call ended, how long the call was, what key they pressed, what time they, key, they pressed the key. You get all the data in a download in a detailed report per every contact. So you basically see every interaction you would want per contact, um, and uh, uh, and and you'll get the transcriptions in there. You can tag results. So you can say like one meant malaria, so you could type malaria in here, uh, and that would tag one to say, oh, that that means somebody wants to know about malaria. So there's a lot of uh, detail and power in the reports. Um, you can play around with it once you start creating your own engagements. Um, these two you can ignore because I'm in my admin account. Uh, you can manage your phone numbers from the phone numbers uh, section up here. We showed you how to buy them uh, while you're in an engagement, but you can also buy them and manage them from the add phone number section. Um, and uh, lastly, you can uh, have multi-users in your account uh, so if you were to just, uh, for example, click on this, uh, if you know you have an organization where you want to have multiple um, users uh, working on the account, so you can just add their email address, and then they'll get an email from our system inviting them to join. 
and then they'll automatically be added to this organization. So you can both work on it, adding contacts, creating engagements, and you can specify different roles um, for different users. If they already have an account, they'll automatically be added to your organization um, when you enter their email address. Um, so multi-users, multi you can also add multiple organizations to your account if you have different country offices or different um, uh, projects uh, that you want to have separated within the system. Uh, yeah, so that's the gist of the platform. There's, there's some more items in here, but um, uh, I think that was probably a lot already. Um, and I guess uh, I will open it up to questions now. Uh, All right. So. Thank you so much, Abner. Uh, that was a very, very thorough uh, demo and uh, quite uh, concise and, and um, speedy. <laughs> so I do want to make sure that we hit some questions here from our attendees. And we already have one that's come in. Um, so uh, the question here is, it seems that organizations need to pay an amount for each missed call, message, or voice call, so it is very small. Could you please share how much was uh, the cost for the Philippines project involving 10,000 people? Um, sorry. Uh, I, what was the, I, I miss, I just missed the first part about missed call. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, no, do you want to make a good question? Sure. Uh, it seems uh, that organizations need to pay uh, uh, some quantity, some amount for each missed call, message, or voice call, uh, which is what you demonstrated to us with uh, the payment options. Um, could you please uh, give a sense of the cost associated with the Philippines project, which was for 10,000 people? Sure. Um, so it, 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 for missed calls, it, it it doesn't matter uh, what country you're in or what telco is being called to. Our, our fee is just uh, half a U.S. cent per missed call to the organization for uh -huh. every missed call that comes in. Um, for voice calls or text messages, it really depends on the telco. So, for example, in the Philippines, um, it's the same per telco. So, all the telcos are 18 and a half cents per voice minute and two cents per SMS. I, know those uh -huh. off the top of my head just because we're here. I don't know all of them by heart, by country. Um, but uh -huh. that program was uh, in the range of uh, about 20-something thousand dollars. And they actually um, were interacting with 20,000 people um, between a mix of SMS and voice calls. Um, so some people received SMS, some people received voice calls. Um, and yeah, so I guess it was about a dollar or so Per, um, per per beneficiary. Very good. Yeah. And just, yeah, thank you so much for that. It's very um, good and kind of a sense of for the quantity. So uh, that program had 10,000 people. So uh, just a question on my front is, are there any limitations with respect to group size relative to the platform? Uh, no, no. No. Not, okay. not, from, not from our okay. side. Obviously, you know, some telcos have limitations on how many SMS uh, you can send to them at once to, at once to deliver to uh, recipients. But from our side, we don't have limitations. In that Fantastic. Great. Well, um, as I mentioned, this is a, quite a thorough demo, and um, we're not seeing too many questions come in because I believe that you've really demonstrated oh, the power of the Engage Park platform. For anybody whose question hasn't been addressed, uh, we certainly want to encourage you to reach out to Abner directly, and we will uh, share an email address uh, via the chat shortly. Um, in the meantime, I would like to invite everybody to join us uh, for our next uh, demo with Kobo Toolbox from the Harvard Humanitarian Initiative, which will be on February 17th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. We'd like to thank all of you for participating in today's special webinar. And uh, of course, for those of you who are seeking to receive professional development hours, the code is listed on the slide. If we again did not address your question during this webinar, feel free to email us at webinars at engineeringforchange.org and join us as an E4C member to get information about uh, upcoming webinars. Um, if one more question came in. 
So uh, just because we have one minute, we'll we'll uh, let Abner tackle that. Sure. I see somebody was asking, are these prices in addition to service fees by carriers? Uh, the answer is no. So we've already made those uh, uh, telco connections with the carriers behind the scenes, and all of our pricing incorporates um, is for use of the platform, uh, and it includes use of the platform and the carrier service fees. So what you see on the pricing page is the only thing you pay, unless you're using our Android app, in which case uh, you're just paying your own local airtime on the SIM card. Uh, but for just sending voice calls or SMS directly from the platform using the Engage Spark network, uh, what you see on the pricing page is all you pay. There's no other fee. Excellent. Thank you so much, Abner. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next webinar on February 17th. Take care. Bye-bye now.